Hello, this is Tom Richard. It has been my pleasure and honor to serve as juror for the 2020 Pine Bluff Art League Annual Exhibition. As an art educator and professor for over the last two decades, I originally planned to approach juring the exhibition in an objective manner. At UAM, the art department hosts the annual K-12 Regional Art Exhibition. I enlist art students to help install and judge the exhibition, as most of them plan to become art educators after graduation. I give students guidelines and criteria based on evaluating technical skill, formal composition, personal expression, and creativity. My original plan was to approach the Art League's exhibition in this manner, but life sometimes throws a monkey wrench into plans. Earlier this summer, my mother, Gerilyn Richard, unexpectedly passed away. She was a great mom and was also an artist. I was responsible for going through her painting room to organize the paintings she made and the art she collected so her other children, grandchildren, and great-grandkids could choose pieces of hers that spoke to them. While I grew up with her art around me, this process allowed me to become inherently re-familiar with my mom's individual personal style. I finished this endeavor just two days before judging this exhibition. Upon entering the rental center to initially view the works available for the exhibition, I realized that my initial plan was inappropriate relative to my state of mind. I then decided, evaluating the work in a much more subjective manner, choosing work that communicates to me, or work that created a personal connection to me as an artist and art collector, was the route I would take. I had the daunting task of limiting the number of works to be included in the exhibition based upon the size of the space at the Arts and Science Center in Southeast Arkansas. I chose pieces that exuded excellence in quality, creativity, and skill, but that also made a personal connection with me. I picked out the top 10 pieces that I found myself to spend more time investigating, and from those 10, I narrowed it down to the top six. These six are those pieces. Honorable mention, Claudia Spain Hour, I'm Watching You. While I'm not a big fan of pet portraiture, uh, but I almost, I also am a dog lover. Uh, this speak, spoke to me in its ability to capture the sitter's personality. I think that this dog is a sneaky, subtle troublemaker that is always watching. Honorable mention, Melissa Abernathy, only the doorway left. This photograph uses dichotomy with issues of open versus closed, growth versus decay, nature versus man-made, organic versus geometric, to make a haunting, mysterious image. Third place, Crystal Jennings. Strength of the pack. Wow, the technical precision, the time and effort, the skill and control, but I was really affected by the personality or the emotions behind the two different stairs. Second place, Linda Mulkins, The Three Amigos. Light, or the color of light. Having lived in South Louisiana, upstate New York, Missouri, and now Arkansas, I've experienced the differences in light of different geographic locations. Here in Arkansas, I've noticed light events that happen rarely only about twice a year when the light is ideal. I noticed this my first fall on a unique day at the time between sunset and dusk. For about 30 seconds, the grass was green and the pine needles were an electric orange. I called to my wife and children to come see, but the fleeting moment had passed. I try to be aware and notice those events. This piece to me captures a similar moment that show an individual's heightened relationship to nature that surrounds us. First place, Rhonda Holdfield, The Hardest Row. I was drawn back and back and back to this piece. Uh, the sincerity, the humanness, and the simplicity of the statement I found quite endearing. Best in show, Jerry DeLongchamp, Sunrise of Lake DeGray. The specificity of time, the beauty of light, the harmonious composition, and the use of media all combined to create an image that allowed me to experience this 
place through the artist's eyes. Again, I would like to thank the Pine Bluff Art League and the Arts and Science Center for the opportunity to serve as juror this year. I hope that artists, both included and not included, continue to perfect their skills, practice their craft, and convey their vision. Thank you.